Hey, this is Presh Tolwalker, and you're watching Mind Your Decisions. Today, everyone is searching for new ways to teach mathematics. What if we found an education tool called Multiply by Lines that did the following? Students love it. They learn it in their spare time, and they even share it with others. It makes sense. Students often say, I finally understand it. It's beautiful. It makes math into an art form. And the method is rigorous. It can be used for arithmetic, algebraic binomial multiplication, number bases other than 10, and so much more. Shouldn't we be teaching this in every classroom? But after 10 years, the method is virtually unknown outside of a few viral videos. Let's spread the word. In this video, I'm actually going to share a new discovery involving the multiply by lines method. But before I get to that, let's do a quick recap of how to multiply numbers by lines. Let's say you want to multiply 12 by 13. For the 1 in 12, we'll draw one line. For the 2 and 12, we'll leave some space and then we'll draw two lines. For the other number, we'll draw lines in the other direction. For the 1 and 13, we'll draw one line. And then for the 3 and 13, we'll leave some space and then we'll draw three lines. Now we will group vertically aligned intersections. Then we'll count the number of intersections. On the far right, there are a total of six intersections. In the middle, we can count there are five intersections, and on the far left, there is one intersection. We then read the numbers from left to right to get the answer. 12 times 13 is equal to 156. What kind of magic is this? In 2007, this visual method to multiply numbers took the internet by storm, bringing joy to millions. Now it is 2018. For over 10 years, everyone missed a mind-blowing discovery about this method. Using group theory, we can supercharge this diagram and solve even more problems. So what exactly is group theory? According to Keith Conrad, a mathematician at the University of Connecticut, broadly speaking, group theory is the study of symmetry. What's it good for? Well, here are a few applications. In pure mathematics, group theory can be used to help prove the impossibility of solving the 15 puzzle or to prove the impossibility of solving a general quintic that's fifth degree polynomial using radicals. In physics, group theory is useful to help predict the existence of particles even before they were seen experimentally. In chemistry, group theory is useful for understanding the structure of crystals and molecules by studying their symmetries. So group theory is pretty useful as a whole. So what's an example of group theory? The introductory example is what are the symmetries of a square? Alternately said, what kinds of rotations or reflections will leave the square exactly the same as it started? Now, if you have a square, one thing you can do is you can rotate it by zero degrees. You can leave it as it is. This is one symmetry. Now, another symmetry will be if you take the square and you rotate it by 90 degrees. The square ends up exactly the same as it started. Another symmetry is if we rotate the square by 180 degrees. Another rotation is if we rotate the square by 270 degrees. Now if we go one more, 360 degrees, that's the same thing as a zero degree rotation. So here are the four rotations which will leave the square exactly the same as we started. But there are other symmetries too. One symmetry is if we do a vertical reflection. Notice the square ends up exactly the same as it started. 
Now we can also do a horizontal reflection. Another symmetry is if we connect two corners and then rotate the square about this diagonal. We can do the same thing for the other two corners and end up with one more symmetry. These are the eight symmetries of a square and they're known as the dihedral group of order eight. Now the bottom row of symmetries actually looks like it's completely different than the top row, but they actually involve 90 degree rotations too. And it'll be easier to see this if I illustrate the symmetries with my logo. So the first symmetry is doing nothing. That'll be my logo. We can then rotate my logo by 90 degrees. We can rotate it by 180 degrees, or we can rotate it by 270 degrees. Now let's go to the bottom row and do the same reflections to my logo. What do we end up with? Well, if you take a look at these diagrams, you'll notice that there are actually hidden rotations in them. In particular, if we rearrange the diagrams as follows, you'll see that the bottom row, the four squares are all rotations of each other, just like in the top row. So this will give us another way to present these symmetries, which will be useful. We can express everything in terms of a single 90 degree rotation, we'll call that R, and a vertical flip, which we'll call S. So the top row, we start out by having a 90 degree rotation being labeled R. A 180 degree rotation is two 90 degree rotations, which is R times R or R squared. A 270 degree rotation is rotating by 90 degrees three times or R cubed. Finally, a rotation of zero degrees we'll call one or the identity element. Now in the bottom row, we can express everything in terms of a vertical flip and a 90 degree rotation that's repeatedly applied. So the vertical flip will be denoted as S. This second reflection can be expressed as R composed with S. We do a vertical reflection and then a rotation. Notice that we do this from right to left just as we would compose functions. The third element in this row can be written as R squared S. This is a vertical reflection and then two rotations. The final diagram is R cubed S. This is a vertical reflection and then three rotations. But did we overlook any symmetries? How do we know there are exactly eight symmetries of the square? Well, let's do a quick proof. I claim there are eight symmetries of a square. It's the dihedral group of order eight. There are no other symmetries. Now to prove this, let's take our square and label the corners A, B, C, and D. Vertex A can move to any of the four possible corners. Now once we've selected where vertex A can be, vertex B can only be in two possible corners because it has to be adjacent to A. It can either be counterclockwise to A or it can be clockwise to A. Once A and B are chosen, C has to be opposite A and D has to be opposite B. There are no more choices. Thus, we can have at most four times two, which equals eight symmetries of the square. And we've already demonstrated how to produce eight distinct elements. So this shows there are at most eight symmetries and we've demonstrated eight symmetries we've established the dihedral group of order eight. So how can this help us in our multiply by lines? Well, notice our diagram. If we remove these vertically aligned groups, and then we look at this lattice that's in the center of the diagram, the multiply by lines method actually has the geometry of a square. The four groups of dots are like the vertices of a square. So let's use group theory on this square-like figure. What will happen? First, I'm going to change the diagram into a rectangle, and then I'm going to smush it together so that we have a square. 
Now let's apply the symmetries of a square to this diagram. One thing we can do is that we can rotate this diagram by 90 degrees. What do we end up with? Well, let's examine this diagram. Here we have one line followed by three lines. This will be the number 13. In the other direction, we have two lines followed by one line. This will be the number 21. Now we can count the intersections to get the answer to 13 times 21. Here we have two intersections, here we have seven intersections, and here we have three. So 13 times 21 is equal to 273. Rotating this diagram by 90 degrees solved an entirely new mathematical problem. Incredible! In fact, what happens if we do another rotation? Let's rotate it so it's 180 degrees from the original. What will this diagram correspond to? Here we have 21, and in the other direction we have 31. So this diagram is 21 times 31. We can again count the intersections to get the answer to this problem, and we get 651. We've solved another problem, so let's go ahead and do another rotation. We now have another diagram. This will correspond to 31 multiplied by 12. What's the answer to this problem? Well, we'll count these intersections, and we end up with 372. One more rotation will bring us back to the start. But now we can use the other symmetries, so let's do a vertical flip of this diagram. We now have another mathematical problem. Here we have three lines followed by one, which is 31. Here we have two lines followed by one, which is 21. So we have 31 times 21. You'll notice these digits are exactly the mirror image of the original problem. The digits are in exact reverse order of 12 times 13. And in fact, the answer will also be a mirror image. Instead of 156, we get 651. Now we can continue finding the symmetries by doing a rotation. Here we have the problem of 21 times 13, and we can again solve this problem and we'll get 273. We can do another rotation and we'll get another problem, which is 13 times 12, which is 156. We can do a final rotation. This will be 12 times 31, which equals 372. One more rotation will bring us back to where we started. So let's recap what we've just solved. We start out with the symmetries of a square using group theory, and we apply these to multiply by lines group theory. We start out with the diagram, then we can rotate it 90 degrees to get another problem. We can rotate it 180 degrees to get another problem. We can also rotate it by 270 degrees to get another problem. We can also reflect this diagram vertically, and then we can do rotations of this reflection. So we end up with these potential diagrams. We have solved four distinct multiplication products, and the bottom row is their mirror images. So to recap, since 2007, tens of millions of people have seen the multiply by lines method. Now with the power of group theory, we have discovered the truly awesome power of visual multiplication. I need your help to spread the word about this discovery. Please share this video. Thanks for watching. These math videos, which can be watched for free, inspire and build confidence for people around the world, and they already have over a hundred million views. Let's share the beauty of mathematics. 
With your help, we can math the world a better place. Please subscribe for free to get the newest videos, watch and share all of Mind Your Decisions videos, email me a puzzle or math topic, presh at mindyourdecisions.com. If you so choose, you can check out my books, which are linked in the video description, and you can support me on Patreon to earn exclusive rewards. Thanks for watching, and thanks for your support.